Good evening, folks. We're at JB Tackle. Myself, Greg DeBrule. CJ Adams here. CJ Adams. We got a special guest here. We got Toby, the editor of the Fisherman Magazine. And uh, we're on the uh, teaching New England to fish from the Blackhawk. Here we go. Ready or not, you know? Good evening. We, I, took, uh, I had my shots. I had my shots. We we're talking it. about black fishing today. Okay, I don't know who wants to start off. Toby, you want to uh, you want to start off? I uh, you guys, CJ, you want to? You uh, we have, these a, off we have a lot going? of we have a lot of questions on. Oh, that's what we got to answer. The answer. Oh boy, we got to answer Greg's questions. We know. Well, no, there's. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. Come on over here. All right. Before we get into things, we're gonna. Before answer a we couple get into things, this is from this is from last week. We got Kyle Downton here. Okay, and uh, Rusty wants to know uh, his rod can't take more than two ounces. How does he get that? Uh, that two ounce jig to the bottom. The whole theory with slow pitch is to use lighter lines so you can get down with a much smaller jig and those jigs are designed to go down through the water column but you also want them to cradle so they're gonna go stop for a second go again and that's why you get bit on the way down because they're actually working as they're going down it's not like a sinker where you want it to go down as fast as it can. Rusty hope that answers your question okay Joanne uh, stay here Kyle Joanne yep. wants to know the name of the expensive rod that's a Shimano Grappler, and there's a lot more. Expensive reel. Oh, expensive reel. Oh, expensive reel. reel. I'm sorry. That's the Heather. Heather, please, Heather, when you write this thing out, it, you know, be explicit. It looks like, it looks like rod. Oh, the hell with it. <laughs> <laughs> the real expensive. The real was the Osea Jigger. I mean, now we rod reel. We got the Grappler and we had the uh, Shimano Osea Jigger yeah. in the 1500. My, my daughter puts a little quote on here. Quotes. Maybe tell her to call Kyle. <laughs> or stop by. <laughs> CJ, this one's for you. Is it recommended to slow jig on the Blackhawk? Will it mess up other fishermen? Well, we see a lot of customers that bring it, especially during cod season. And if you know what you're doing, uh, you're fairly safe with it. We get the guys that come out uh, with, the, with the jigs, and they don't understand the concept, and they, they tangle up everybody as far as dropping it too late, not even paying attention where they're dropping the rod and you drop it on top of your neighbor's uh, rig. Um, but the guys that know how to jig, uh, it works at times. Um, so I do recommend it, but I also recommend... Talent. Get, exactly. Getting a fish in, getting a fishing at it before you start to do that. It's a very highly effective we way usually, to catch fish. We usually take people like you take Bruce or somebody and put him up in the bow where he's by himself up there and... He does a we, number on them. We know? do have quite a few guys that we see all the time that will fish mid-rail with everybody right there uh, jigging, and they will stay out of the tangles because they've been doing it for so long. Uh, so before you just bring a jig out in the boat, get efficient with it uh, because you will cause tangles, and you'll, you'll screw things up for your neighbor. Um, it, it all starts with keeping your rod straight and not drop it on top of your neighbor. Um, the, the little things add up when it comes to that jigging stuff. Uh, was okay. that it for questions? That's good. That's it for questions. Blackfish. I will say this about blackfish, okay? Having been doing it for the better part of 50 years, uh, you, you take a good black fisherman, and he's just a good fisherman, period. I mean, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing easy about catching these things. I mean, they're, they're easy once you got it down to a science. You guys blackfish all the time. These they, guys, uh, when, they, when they come off the Blackhawk after a trip, these guys go out on their own boat blackfishing for... For fun, and yeah. most of them you don't even keep. You're letting go eight, ten, twelve pound fish at times. Know? Yeah, um, but uh, they but do. They it. can be tricky. That's not yeah. all the time. We don't go out and kill them all the time. Uh, and they they can be humbling. They, Just yes. when you oh, think can be you have it figured out, yeah. you get a little ego going. They put you back in your place. In your place, and that's one of the beautiful things about them. Uh, I personally, I've had some days where you go out and you you catch ten, twelve keepers. You know, we're not keeping them all, uh, and you go out the next day and. Your buddy standing right next to you, I've had it happen to me, will put you to shame where I catch zero. Um, it's, it's black fishing. I, I have never seen, a, you know, that said, I've never seen any fishery blossom like this. It definitely I mean, has. I can remember, and we're not talking, well, I guess we are talking a long time ago, 30 years ago, 35 years ago. Myself and Richie Jensen out of Orient Point, the Nancy Ann, were the only two boats black fishing. Mm -hmm. I'd black fish down Watch Hill, he'd be, you know, up here. And, uh, and that was it. You didn't see skiffs. There was no skiffs. The kayaks weren't even invented, you know? And, and now, oh my God, now it's like every, every, rock, little, pile. every yeah. rock pile is taken with uh, GPS and plotters and, and uh, oh my God, it's, uh, it, it's just incredible. It's incredible the amount of pressure 
that's put on those poor fish. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the black fishing we have uh, <clears throat> in our area is some of the best. It's hands down some of the best fishing because of the structure we have. We have, I believe, three different seasons. We have a spring season. I got a question about that, actually. Tiffany wants to know about the spring season, how was, deep in the water temperature. I saw so. Tiffany's question. That's what I'm answering right now. Okay. I wasn't going to say that, Tiffany, but I know that's this is your question. <laughs> he knew uh, it. You saw the question. How did you see She the said it on our uh, – we had a post saying we were going live tonight. And I saw, oh, she already – I saw Tiffany oh, ask the question. Okay. I just saw I it now. Say, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know <laughs> Tiffany very well. You're hitting it out of the park tonight, man. Tiffany, I love you. You're a great person. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, yes, we have three different seasons, a spring, uh, a summer, and a fall season. Um. The spring season is tricky, at, at, to say the least. They show up in shallow water to spawn. They're really not materialized out in your 40, 50 feet of water spots where you can go in the fall and catch them. That being said, it's a day-to-day -day thing when they show up. They usually, from what I've seen, I fish a lot in the spring, but it's in very, very shallow water. Rivers, I'm sure you've done the same. Yeah, around very shallow. Break walls. Break walls. Uh, they spawn. So, Tiffany... They're really not materials. I know you have a really nice boat. You guys fish all summer long. I wouldn't recommend personally to go out to those spots in 40, 50 feet where you catch them regularly in the fall. They're not there. They're not there. They come They're in the shallow there. water to spawn. Um, if you can get your boat into some shallow water uh, as far as any river, uh, outside the Connecticut River, outside the Niantic River, outside of the Thames, you'll probably catch a few fish, but we're talking, we're talking 10 feet or less. Uh, Toby, Toby, that said, Toby is the shallow water expert. <laughs> Okay, I mean, tell them what you do with your kayak, yeah, well, and this is specifically with the spring. What I'm looking for until I start, when I start going out, if you get surface temps staying in that 46, 47 degree range, that's when you can start really thinking about it. Um, and as far as location, like CJ said, shallow, shallow. Find a rock pile, whether it's exposed at part of the tide, or the break walls, the dark, dark rocks. During the day, they absorb the heat from the sun, and as the tide comes in on them, that little water around it, it might be a degree. A degree and a Makes half. A difference. It's just enough to move them, get them going, to chew. They might be there prior to that. You get that little warm up and they just start feeding. It's not very often a super fast and furious bite in the spring. It's no, sort of it's like not. you scratch it out, you work for it, and it's usually the last last two days of the April it season. Is, it's before. always the last two it. days. It's, 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 all, it's, it's, it's painful because <laughs> when it's on, it's on in the yes. spring, but they are finicky from the first off, and you said what, 47? 46, 47. I've right noticed before. personally, uh, 48, 48 and a half, 49. That's when I've seen them where I fish, and I do quite a bit of it in the spring, but like Toby said, it's always the last two days. Yeah. Um, I like 80, 85. Yeah. yeah. That'd be <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it shallows. It literally, I, 10 I, feet around. I have there, seen, I have seen these kayaks butted right up to the rocks. Yep. I mean, I'm in the kayak here, the rock's right there, the guy's fishing in, what, six, eight, ten feet of water. That's it. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's a close, shallow water fishery. As close as you can, yep. the kayaks yep. easily can get in there. Yep. Small boats can get in there quite easily. Obviously, Blackhawks black, cannot get in there. Not, not quite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unless it's a mistake. Yeah. We have a lot of questions, and I don't know if we have one yet, about the bait, so to say, from the shallow water to the deeper water. Now, I know Toby and myself, when we're fishing that shallow water, we like to go with those... Asian crabs, or so to say. They uh, they live in the rocks. You can go off your local beaches at low tide, flip over those dark rocks like he was mentioning, and you'll find them scurrying off. We grab piles of them, and you, you, I fish them whole. I don't know how he does. Crack the top of the shell, but in the shallow water in the spring, and in the fall, so to say, they work excellent in shallow water. Personally, I can't speak for everybody. Once I've gone over 25, 30 feet of water, they haven't worked well, so I go to the green crabs or the white leggers, uh, especially fish in deep water at Black Island. But shallow water, the Asian crabs work very, very well. Green crabs will work, but they're fine-tuned to what what is living in that shallow water. And there's a lot more Asian crabs in shallow water, so they're going to feed more often on those. I'm sure you could say the same thing. Absolutely, I agree. When I'm fishing on the break walls, fishing the shallower water, it's Asians first. If I find some greens... As I'm flipping rocks, collecting Asians, or if I'm buying uh, crabs as well, I might get some greens to fill in. Uh, but first bait, when I'm shallow, on the jig, is going to be an Asian crab. Uh, if I do switch over to the greens, whether it's I'm running low on those Asians or just trying something different, that's when I cut them. I'll go with a smaller bait on the greens, a half crab. I might cut the legs off. I'm using are, smaller. Are you using jigs mostly? Primarily up close like that, I'm using jigs, small jigs. I'll start off with a half ounce, a three-quarter ounce head, 
and the hooks on them are smaller. So that's another reason I feel that the Asians aid in the success. It's yep. just a little piece of, of bait on there. They can suck it right in. When I'm fishing the deeper water, I'll fish some jigs. Um, if I got to use more than two, two and a half ounce jig to hold the bottom, then I'm switching over to a, a standard rig. And that's more often than not in that scenario, that's when I'm using green crabs. Um, and my we rig is simple. The, this is, we, a, very, this is we, a very similar rig that we use on the Blackhawk. We Hawk. use the same thing on a Blackhawk. The, the, sinker's, the, the sinker's in the loop, the hook is below it, you know, and uh, well, it's above it, but it goes below yeah, it. Yeah, that's all but it that's, is. 50 or 60 pound mono for this is the one I tied up. I run four, five uh, uh, octopus hook, whatever sinker I need to hold. Very simple. If I lose it, I'm not worried about it. Um, People ask us all the time that they, they want two hooks on it like cod fishing, you know? Yeah, I personally, I don't like the two hook idea. I don't need one hook. It's just another hook to get snagged in the rocks. You know, you know that's it. People ask us all the time, yeah, why do you have to fish yeah. in that hard bottom? I got, I got to take this off. Yeah. It broke. You've had your shot, you said. I've had my shot. Vaccines. I'm not going to kiss you. I, I would hope not, but <laughs> you know? I'm going to take this off. It broke. It's going to cause problems. Yeah, there, like you say with the, the, the hook rig, there's many snafu rigs, slider rigs, two hooks. I've tried them. I've played around with them a bit. Maybe if you're using like a, a mid-Atlantic where they use the whole white leggers. I see that to be maybe beneficial then when you've got a crab this big, you've got to hook on either end. Around here, if we're just using either a whole or a half green, this hook is more than enough in that bait. And like CJ said, it's one last thing to get hung up. Yeah, in the those. You're, you're the best gear, the better. Keep, keep, it simple, keep it simple, stupid. Keep yep. it simple, stupid. The kiss principle. <laughs> but people ask us all the time, you know, why why aren't there two hooks on it, you know, or why do we lose so much gear? I mean, you know, the getting back to the party boat, the tackle that the people bring. If you've got old mono, old braid, old, you know, the stuff doesn't hold it's up a, in that. It's a it's an acid. It's the acid test of if, fishing on a party boat. If you're going to you know? be serious about it, like Toby, myself, Greg, uh, Randy, who's shooting. We're here at Jamie Tackle. If you're going to be serious about it, like we all are, you, you got to use the right stuff. At the bare minimum, at least uh, at least change out your line. You know, at least get the right whether it's monofilament you like to use. Some guys are old school; they still fish with monofilament for blackfish. The braid, especially, at least change it out and get some fresh stuff on there because we see it from you're, time and time. You're fishing in such hard bottom. That's mm -hmm. all there is to it. When you, know? you when you bring stuff on the boat that's been sitting in your in your garage or your basement for Every even every year, over and over again, whether it's in the sun or not, you gotta change that stuff because it you gets see, worn out. You see some of the monofilament on these reels, you know, and you look it at comes it, off. It's, it's powdered. Yes, it's, it's powdered, <laughs> and it's been on there so and long. I mean, we're not telling you to go out and buy a giant, expensive, fancy rod and reel, but at least make sure your tackles. Where we want you to catch them. We yeah. believe me, we want you to catch them. One thing okay? I find too with the braid, you're in the nasty rock. So if you take a look at this. This is my rig. The bait's going to be on the bottom. So I'm running, you know, five to six feet of monofilament. In this case, 50 or 60 pounds. That helps a lot. If you tie your braid direct here, you're 12 inches above the, the, the sinker, you're more likely you're going to get clipped off because yeah. the braid is going to cut off right away on the rock. So the braid, the braid doesn't have, you know, for you novices, the braid doesn't have the abrasion no. resistance that the monofilament does. So and that's why you put that little top shot on there. And five check feet. it. You get yeah. a fish or two, or every fish. I, yeah. keep an eye on it. And it's amazing how quickly you get a little nick. And if you're just using this, there's nothing to it. You can tie up a bunch of them, go through them. I always feel I'd rather put a fresh one on that cost me a couple of cents than have that next fish break me off because I was too lazy to, to switch up I've, on it. I've been lazy before, and it's it's probably cost me a good fish, you know. Uh, but if you're if you're fishing, especially on some wrecks or deep water and targeting that, that fish of a lifetime, make sure your tackle's where it needs to be uh, and change the rigs frequently not only that we we deal with this all the time um and i see it if i'm fishing with my buddies on the blackhawk i know what you're gonna say other boats <laughs> guys for whatever it is change your bait uh we we watch people reel we, it up we harp on it we do. Um, we harp on I don't people. know. I don't know how else to, to say it. Whether to even come around to your hook and, and take it off and change it for you, because you have to change the bait. That bait, you got to understand something. We're fishing a lot of current. Blackfish like that stuff. So when you drop that crab down in any depth of water, it gets washed out uh, instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Whether whether you get a bite or not. If you don't get a bite, it's getting washed out hands down. No no matter what. If you get a bite, then the crab's bitten in half. So it's going to wash out even more. 
I always get a bite, set the hook. We watch guys wait. I, I don't know what they're waiting for. Uh, the fish on a, on a standard J hook, you're not going to hook them. Uh, you have to set the hook. It's not like the porgies and sea bass with a clam where they just climb on. You have to set the hook and instantly reel it up and change it out. The more bait you lose, believe it or not, it works like a chum, chumming mechanism. Lose the bait, reel it up, put a new one on. Those fish you got 30, come. 40 people down there, and mm -hmm. everyone's got crabs we, down there. That's that's a lot. We notice but. we get guys get so discouraged when we do, like, especially at Block Island, the blackfish combos. Oh, God, the combos. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're great, but they're also the toughest for the guys that can't catch them. Because we, we, normally, we normally like to start off with the, with the black fishing first. Yes. Because it's the hardest. Okay, you, you don't want to go from the sea bass and the porgies and these guys think they're good fishermen because they caught 30, 40, 50 <laughs> porgies and a bunch of sea bass and then they go to the blackfish, they don't catch anything. We leave them on a high note. <laughs> they're, they're disappointed. We want to leave them on a high note. So yep. we try to start off with the black fishing and inevitably you got three, four, five guys out of the 30 people that are really good at mm -hmm. it. And we see it all the time. And we see it all the time. They're changing their bait every minute. There's they... a reason why they're catching three, four, five of them. Uh, and the guy standing next to them is not Some catching. of the people get pissed. They do. They, they do. They get mad. They want to change over the clams. We try and limit that. We try and fish the crabs only. Because if you start dropping soft bait down, that's when the porgies and the sea bass will show up. And it'll kind of shut the black fishing off. Now, it won't shut it off completely, but... When we're targeting the blackfish, we want to target the blackfish, That's and it. then we go target the porgies and sea bass. It's just discouraging to us to see the people get upset when the guy next to him has got a couple of keepers already, and all this guy's a couple of 10, 12, 12 pound fish. It, and he... One thing I'll say about that: so this year I got my son into blackfishing. He's eight years old. Did relatively well. He what he did is he listened to my direction. So if you're out with the blackfish, CJ's telling you do this or don't do that. Pay attention to that because again with the with the blackfish there. They're humbling. There's a lot of little tricks to it. It's basically simple, but there's tricks. So if these guys are telling you, change your bait, set the hook this way, if my eight-year-old son can follow it and do well, listen to the, to the guys on the boat, and they're going to help you along as well. That's a big thing to be willing. Make, make sure uh, if, you're, if you're serious about black fishing, you're trying to get into it, or a beginner, whatever it may be, make sure you got the right amount of lead uh, on your boat. Because we fish a lot of current up here in Connecticut. Uh, the, the tide is always moving relatively. So there could be at times of the tide where you're fishing a 2 ounce and 45 minutes go by and you need a 12 ounce. So make sure you have a variety of sinkers on your boat. Two up to sometimes 16 ounces, depending on where you're fishing. Not all the time, but I like to use any, I like to have anywhere from 2 to 12 ounces of lead when I'm going black fishing. We, uh, we used to, before braid... And I'm dating myself again. Before Braid at Race Rock, we would fish 26 thousandths Monell wire. wire. Right, yeah. We'd fish wire line. This is before Braid with a 20 ounce sinker yeah. in that it's tide. It's incredible. Yeah. In that tide. And you could only do it with special customers, but that's the only way we could at the, at the time. We didn't have the technology, but we knew that wire could get down there. Mm -hmm. And if we could get it down there and keep it down there, we could catch them. But now, now you people that are listening, now with the technology, with with plotters and uh, GPS and what's the thing you use on a kayak? The, the spot lock on my the kayak. The spot lock, <laughs> man, that keeps the thing right there. You've got such an advantage, my God. If if we had that stuff 30, 40 years ago, you'd probably be taking up tennis because there wouldn't be anything <laughs> left. You know. And as far as that, with the sinkers, with the weights, if you as soon as you feel that you're not holding properly. Adjust. If you think they're too heavy, go a little lighter. For instance, with the jigs, I'll Big start thing. off when it's if the current's not moving. I'll start off with a half ounce. I've usually got two rods rigged up with the jig, so I'll have a half ounce and a one ounce, or a half and a three quarter. When that half isn't holding, I'll jump up. I'm always switching to have just the right. You want with the jigs, you just want to be holding bottom so the current isn't quite moving you off, which is why I said I only go up to two ounces when I'm out in a boat away from you know in the deeper water, the stronger currents. I may use the a spinning gear, um, like some of the, the Tsunami slow pitch rods work really well for the spinning, the medium, and the heavy rod. Once you start hitting that two ounce, that's when I switch over to the conventional and the rigs. And this, I'll bring two ounce, like you said, up to 12, 16 ounces, and I'm constantly changing. If that, if I'm scoping out too much with the bait, add some weight to it. You, know, you want, just like it is, you want it up and down. You want to be able to feel. Yeah, yeah right when, when Toby's are. talking about that, about changing the sinker, uh, lead wise because the current's moving faster you have to understand something those fish when it starts to run harder and harder and let's say you start to lose the bite 
it, the, the fish didn't leave. They're just getting pushed back a little bit in the tide. So you have to change your sinker mount. Otherwise, as you drop down a two ounce and the tide's starting to move, your sinker's going way past this fish. So as you drop it, let's say you put it on an eight ounce, you drop it down. Yeah, it's going to scope a little bit, but it's going to scope to where those fish got pushed to. You understand? I, I hope everybody kind of understands mm -hmm. that. Because as you fish like a face of a piece, now what's a face of a piece mean? Big rock pile, you anchor up, fish the face, current's running this way. Those fish get there, and then all of a sudden they get pushed up and pushed up, and you got to make sure you adjust your sinker to that current so you get back to where those fish are. Otherwise, you drop down that two-ounce sinker through a screaming tide, it's a mile away from the fish already, back off the side of the sand. That's why you, you have to have a lot of sink, a lot of lead, and make sure you bring quite a bit of it because if anybody doesn't know, black fishing, you will go through some sinkers. It's no question about it, I'll lose myself on a four or five hour black fishing trip just messing around, I could lose up to a dozen sinkers myself. You don't get discouraged because that's where they live. <laughs> that's where they live though. You, you yeah. gotta have the, your gear and you gotta change it out. And if you wanna catch them, if you don't, then maybe pick up porgy fishing. You know, but black fishing, like you were saying, by far, is now, one of the toughest fish to catch. Now let's, let's talk about probably the most important part. You can have the right tackle, you can have the right baits, the hooks, the this and that. But as far as I'm concerned, the most important thing in the black fishing is the location, is being, knowing where you want to be and getting the boat on that spot. Because you can be 15, 20 feet off and you might as well be two miles. Those fish live in particular areas, having done some diving around race rock and in the river and this and that. and. and and you you dive too, don't you? Yep. A little bit, a little thing down, yeah. To to see them fish down there and how they accumulate around a particular piece, and that's we can't teach you that. Yeah, it, it like we can't they, teach you that. They'll you know? key in on a spot. One thing I'll find is, let's say I'm on, whether I'm on a kayak or boat, if I'm standing here and I'm getting nothing right here, a two foot move just swing the rod tip over, and if I'm getting them there, I, I keep track of where I got that last fish. Go right back to it, because oftentimes you're going to pull a few for whatever it is, whatever attracted them to that spot. It's not usually one unless it's the queen of that rock pile that you pulled out. Otherwise, the quality fish, they, they group up in these little spots. It might be one there, might be one here, nothing in between. So I'll move. If I don't have anything on a couple of drops, you know, just turn. We have, Slide over. We have, had, we have had trips in the past years where... A certain section of the boat, of course, the Black Hawk being 75 foot, it's, yeah. a certain section will catch, and the other ones they might be they might be out in left field someplace. They're yeah. not going to get a bite. And the, realistically, and, and again, ten, they get they're only 10 feet from each other, but yeah. you might as well be a mile away. It's uh, it's that most, it's that difficult. Another thing, keeping the boat steady. I mean, you know, I was going to say, you know, like if you're fishing, and I'm sure you've done it, it uh, on breakwaters and yep. stuff like that. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story. When uh, when you want to keep the boat steady, and you're anchored up like at uh, New Haven on the breakwater, yeah. or Stonington, or any rock Clinton, pile, Westbrook, all, the, all Westbrook, all in places, you throw the anchor, you back the boat up to the rock pile, and then what? I mean, you can use a piece of wood, you can use chain. I've yep. seen them use everything. One thing when you set your anchor, you want it as quite a ways out and double check that it's set because the last thing you want to be doing it's is going towards the rocks. the rocks. I've seen boats thought they had that anchor set and they start sliding we see, close. We so see it all the time. You be double, triple sure that that anchor has grip before you but, start going. But to keep, the, to keep the boat straight where you want it, if you put a piece of rope through a piece of, this happens to be a two by three, and then you're right up close to the rocks and you throw the piece of wood into the rocks or the chain on it mm -hmm. and then you can hook that into the rocks and now you're now you're anchored up in the bow and now you're anchored in the back and the boat's stationary because yeah. the last thing you want to do is have that boat moving all around swaying all over the place you can't you can't have that if yeah, you, you can't if have you do it keep keep conscious of the current too if you the set conditions off, yeah. yeah if you if you start off at low water and you're you know, you fish a whole tide, you're coming up, keep an eye on how your rope is, where you're setting with the current, as that current increases, or if it's dropping. You've got a different angle, so we're always, when I'm on the smaller boats, on the break walls, which I do a lot of, especially in the spring, keep an eye on it. You really want to be conscious. Don't just set it and be like, all right, I'll touch that in six hours when we leap. Yeah, do not it, do it that. It can, it is dangerous. It, it, it's, it's very productive, but you just got to know what you're doing and pay attention. I know a friend of mine, first time he tried it, he put his boat on a break wall. 
it just got away from him, so you just, you got to be careful. Did he, did he catch anything? Um, uh, he he caught a cold. He, he ended up getting <laughs> soaked when he got back on the boat, but he's okay. He's still with us. Hey, yeah. Toby, I had a question for you before. It was just, when do you switch over to a three-way rig? You said like a two-ounce or so yeah, in the jig. Yeah, so if I'm fishing, I'll start off uh, on the slower currents or shallow water. Again, a, a, a half-ounce to a two-ounce jig. Once I can't hold bottom, I don't feel I'm comfortably staying in the in, in the strike zone. That's when I switch. Um, pretty much on the break walls in Long Island Sound, it's very rare that I have to switch over to a rig. It's more when I'm out in the open water, uh, any of the reefs out in the deeper water. But again, it's that roughly a two ounce jig mark for me. That's when I make the switch. Other guys I know will, will do about three ounces. There's just something if, if you can get away with even a half ounce jig in 30 feet of water. With that little bait that they don't even know it's there they suck it up and just move on it's it's it can be effective but it's a slim window in the deeper water we go that light i've never learned how to fish the jig i've, I've black fished for it's quite not... some time and uh, and a lot of guys probably watching a lot of my friends make fools out of me because <laughs> i don't know when to set the hook on it make a and fool I, out of you yeah I'll, I'll, it's... I'll be honest with it i i don't know when to we set the hook you know we never had that. I mean, I never had that. And we don't get the opportunity on see, a big boat. You see so many big fish, as probably a few guys are watching that have caught some really nice oh, fish. Oh, no question about it. Uh, it's, no question. It's, it's, only it's, bigger it's amazing fish. what what changes over the years as far as the, the tech. Like, who would have ever thought to use it? Something like this. Yeah, Sean's yeah. laughing at you right now, CJ. It, <laughs> you know, look, look at this. I mean, it is weird. And the I color, hope, I, yeah, I mean... It's it's crazy. I I pick something up like this after black fishing for at, since I was a kid and look at this and say, you tell me you're gonna catch a blackfish with this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and it's it's, like, it's funny. There's days I usually I have all different colors. Every color it's I'm amazing. To unpainted. It's amazing. Some, I don't know if it's the mental thing. The fish that day. There are days where a certain color will work. That's another thing I'll change. If I hold them the right weight, I know there's fish down there, but I'm not doing it. I'll switch from a pink to a green, bright yellow. And then suddenly the bite will just turn. Whether it was the color change or what have you, I don't know. But as far as you said, with the hit on the jig, what I wait for, and I explain this with my son, is it a scratchy, chewing bite. When you suddenly feel it go slack, what has happened is that blackfish, he was, I might, I'm envisioning, he's kind of chewing on it. He's now grabbed it, and now you feel it slack. And that, you know, the hook is in. If you get to that point before you lose your bait or swing and miss, 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to hook that fish if it goes slack. Sometimes you'll see it, and this is the one that get me excited. You'll have the rot, you're down, you got the line tight on the jig, you feel something, it'll go slack, and no lie, you'll see your line just start going. And that, <laughs> wow. that is, the biggest fish of the day is always going to be that one. And sometimes you land them, sometimes I, you don't. When I'm black fishing, I, I, like I said, I don't fish these things, but when I'm fishing a conventional rig, uh, we like to call them sinker lifters. When, when, yeah. when you Same feed, when, when a fish lifts up a 12 ounce sinker, you get excited. You know, oh boy, like oh boy, that was a, and, you, and then you miss them, and then you miss them, and you say, "Oh man, that was a sinker lifter." Yep. <laughs> and, yeah, and it's it's uh, black fishing is is very very fun. It's very popular. Uh, we wish and hope that everybody watching and that is trying to get into this stuff can get out there and catch some, because uh, it is competitive and really fun fish really good fish to eat too mm -hmm. fun to catch hey i forgot a while ago but george dower says hi and all the guys from jersey hi george hi hey to george you. how you doing just throwing that out there all the guys from jersey maryland we can't wait to fish with you this yeah. summer george it was a while ago but i got you in there <laughs> let me uh let me say one thing i just wanted to uh add this you know when you're this is for deep water fishing where we where we fish and and on a wreck and every everybody doesn't do this but you know when you're when you're anchoring on a wreck you obviously got to get on it and one of the things about a lot of these, I'm just using this small Danford anchor off my Zodiac, but uh, one of the things with the Danford, when you throw it over, when you want to drop this thing, a lot of these Danfords, they, they, they drift down like this, they don't go. So you want it to land right here and it ends up landing over there. One of the, one of the tips I can give you that I've used my whole career, because we've done a lot of wreck fishing for, for Cod and Pollock and Hake, is we take a piece of round stock and we weld it to the base of the of the Danford right here. A piece of round stock steel. In this case, it would be a piece like this, this long, and weld it right there. Now, when you take this anchor and you throw it over, it goes down like a ballistic rocket. It, it, it's going to land where you dropped it. Mm -hmm. 
I, it was on a rug, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> and just like just a little the, tip, but it, it, it and it holds better. I'll be honest with you, but uh, you know, be ready maybe to lose an anchor too. I, or, or oh yeah, oh yeah, the rocks. Oh, my oh, God. I've been on a couple of trips where you're on the verge of cutting. You wrote because we've fortunately gotten it out oh, each time, but it, when it's in there, or if you do get it, it's bent up because oh, I've yeah, seen them come, come up times all bent up. <laughs> it, no, it's just another part of it. So you can you band. can put a release. I know, I yes. know. We've had we've had releases on these even just yep. weld a shackle on there and run the chain down so that when you're pulling the anchor, you're not pulling from here. You'll you'll break this off and you'll pull from here. Yeah, you know. But don't ever, don't ever, ever, never cut an anchor. Don't ever. I, it, that's just, that's sickening. I mean, I wish we had the ball and everything that we could show them how to get them up. You can get them up. If you can't get it up, my God, uh, clean it off and run, you yeah. know, but don't, if you cut it, you're, you're admitting defeat. You yeah. know, that's right. we haven't done that yet. I've broken them. Pull. Don't get me wrong. I've, <laughs> I've broken the anchor. I mean, I've broken, you know, I pulled so hard that if they've come up twisted to hell and I got to bring mm -hmm. them to the machine shop to get them straightened out and everything. But uh, when I hear somebody say I couldn't get the anchor if I had to cut it, oh my God. <laughs> maybe maybe croquet is uh, more your speed there a little bit, you know. But it's a tough fishery. It's a fun fishery. It's really good on the Blackhawk. We're very fortunate to uh, to do the combo trips are, and everything, yeah. where we do half and half mm -hmm. and uh, break it up. And uh, if you, you know, have your own boat, uh, a smaller boat, private little boat, you know, if you have a twenty foot boat, go out and experience. Uh, try it. It can't hurt because it, if at the end of the day you can always resort back to the porgies or the sea bass. But, but go give the black fishing a shot and see how it goes for you. It's and if you're on a, a small boat, too, in the fall, there's so much other stuff around. I always have a secondary rod rigged up with yep. a, a popper or a soft plastic because inevitably yeah, albies are going to show up, stripers, yep. blues. So if you're not you catching the time, thing, you got something hold. else. Mm -hmm. uh, Heather wanted me to mention this, so I have to uh, I have to mention this. We have a photo contest going on. Are you aware of it? Yes. You should see I some do. of the photos. <laughs> Go online and vote for your favorite photo. Okay, we've got some good ones. We have got, I, I would like to thank everybody that's uh, participated in this and sent us their photos because we've got hundreds of them. Okay, so go online, vote for your favorite. Uh, we just got done this morning, really. Yeah, was, uh, yeah last night was our last dive. Last night we went on a night dive. Uh, I, as many of you know, we've been... Uh, We've been hired by Millstone. We've been taking out divers the last three weeks. It was only supposed to last about 10 days, and it was almost triple that. But we're, we're done with it. Our last dive was last night. We left at 9 o'clock, and you got back in at what, 3? 3.30? Three, yeah, 2.30, something like that. Anyways, but we were done in the middle of the morning. So uh, we're, we're, we're done with that. So uh, we're going to get the boat ship-shaped here. We're going to be doing some seal watches. You can look online for that. Uh, and uh, wants to know when we're going to start fishing. When right now, right fishing? now the cod fishing uh, mm -hmm. isn't the best, so we're we're going to maybe stay away from that. We may do a trip or two in April, uh, but I assume, regardless of the cod, we're going to start squid fishing, uh, hopefully in April, um, as long as the w weather gets a little warmer and everything cooperates. If we have a nice warm spring, we'll be fishing in April for the squid. Uh, porgies, I would assume, probably in May. That's historically when they show up, but uh, I would say squid to start in yep. April, hopefully. Uh, We're going to be doing a lot more of it than we ever did. It's yeah, um, got new lighting on the boat for you. We got, right? We've got more lights. There's no <laughs> question the boat with the lights, the most lights wins. If you've never done the squid <laughs> fishing, lights. if you've never done the squid fishing, check it out. It's uh, it's entertaining. They're great to eat. You can't beat it. A lot of fun. And and like everything else, there's a little technique to it. A little bit. A little bit of a technique <laughs> to it, you know. But they are fun to catch. They don't fight very good. Some, but of, they are some fun. of the big ones will pull a little bit, especially on an ultralight. Boy, you get a big bull squid, boy. I'll tell you, it really takes off, huh? <laughs> They'll fight you when they come up, too. Yeah, you know, up, uh, yeah. Over the rail. That's when they fight. I'm going to use my ice fishing jig around this year. That'll be, that'll be a good time. There They'll fight go. on that. There you go. So that's it, I guess. Anything Anything else? Any other questions there, Rando? No, I think we covered them yeah. all. If anybody posts any questions, I'll keep an eye on it, too, and I'll, I can respond. If there was anything about anything I discussed, I'll assist as well, too. Super. Thank you very Absolutely. much for coming. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Absolutely. You know. Okay, Enjoy folks. Pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Keep those cards and letters coming in, okay? And uh, everybody stay healthy and take a kid fishing. We say that every week, okay? If you don't have any kids, take a neighborhood kid. But, uh, but take them fishing, okay? We'll see you next week. Take care.